Hey folks, I'm Captain Dave from the Bayman here on the Massachusetts coast. I'm going to tie a fly today called the Bayman Universal. The Bayman Universal is a pattern I designed about 15, 20 years ago for catching striped bass on the bay out here on the Massachusetts coast. Uh, since that fly has been designed, it's being fished all over the world and has caught uh, a whole huge variety of species of stuff I never would have dreamed of that uh, would have been taken the Bayman Universal fly. It's been fished from Massachusetts to Africa to Australia and uh, all over the U.S. So it's a cool fly. It works really well on a variety of fish, although we did design it for striped bass. I'm going to show you how to tie it right now. Uh, we tie it on a Eagle Claw 254 SS saltwater hook. It's a nice hook, and I like the Eagle Claw. It's got a really big eye to it. So if you're tying this on in the dark or at night, or if you're older like I am and you're trying to tie it up, uh, you can see the hole to get going. So you can tie it on any hook, but I happen to like the Eagle Claw 254SS. It just seems to have a nice balance, and it really looks nice uh, on the fly when it's all finished up. Again, this fly is not a finesse fly. You guys who tie salmon flies that are really superb fly tires, don't knock this because it's not a real creative fly. What it does is have all the primary bait colors of all the striped bass in our bay. It's got olive, pink, white, it's got a little red gill underneath, it's got peacock curl over the back, and we use Danville flat wax nylon for the threads. So stick with us, here we go, we're gonna start tying it. Gonna wrap on the hook. Close up that gap on the hook. You always want to do a little bump at the front if you got a wide gap there. Otherwise your line, your lead is going to slip through there when you're fishing. Come back to the tip, come back forward. And the whole reason we wrap that, obviously, is so the material doesn't spin around the hook. Okay, so that's it. First thing that's going to go on is a custom pink. All right, here's our custom pink right here. A goodly amount, all right? I'm not going to give you exact dosages because that can only come from practicing tying this fly. All right, so we'll put on our pink, tied right up close to the shank. Gonna wrap it good. This, you'll see me putting a lot of thread on here too. If you guys who are purists, really good fly tires, you might balk at that, and I understand completely, but we tend to tie a heavy fly. This is fished in rough water in the salt, and uh, it's gotta be rugged. We wanna catch 20, 30 fish on this fly before it falls apart. And uh, we've actually caught over 100 fish on one fly a couple times. Uh, it was beat at the end, but it was still catching fish. All right, next thing we're gonna add is some flash. I got some nice flash here. We got crystal flash, salt water. You can put fresh water flash in it as well. I like a lot of flash in my flies to really add a lot of scales. So we're gonna heavily dress this pattern as opposed to sparsely dressing it. And incidentally, we do tie this fly in a freshwater pattern for trout as well. We call it a baby Bayman and not a Bayman Universal. So the Bayman Universal is really a saltwater pattern or big, uh, big fish, all right? Okay, next up, we're gonna go with this nice honey olive. There's olive out there that looks more green. This fly, for whatever reason, looks better and fishes better if you got honey olives. So try to find the honey olives. We're gonna pick the longest part of the hackle that we can on the honey olive. Get a nice little section of it for the body. All right, that's a decent section right there. And again, I'm just trimming my ends off nice and flush. I'm gonna bring it over the back. So the olive's about double the amount of your perfect pink. That pink, by the way, is a custom dye. I call it Captain Dave's Perfect Pink. You can find pinks that'll work uh, in your fly tying shop, but there's nothing like a custom dye if you can get it. All right, so there's the olive, there's our pink. Okay, it doesn't look like much yet, but stick with me now, because as this thing dresses up, it really starts to look nice. Next up, peacock curl. You gotta have some good hurl. The longer the better, because you could always trim it. Short hurl doesn't seem to work as well as long hurl on this pattern. And again, you can heavily dress it or you can sparse dress it. I'm gonna go with a moderate amount here. Put it right over the top. And spin, do a little pinch move, make sure everything's sitting on the hook shank, nice and neat. All right, see how our fly's starting to take shape? Look at that, isn't this starting to look pretty? Look at that, that's nice and flowy, it looks exciting. It looks exciting to me and it looks exciting to the fish when it's in the water. Okay, so check that out. All right, now we're gonna invert the fly. We're gonna start working on the bottom. We're almost done. I told you it was a simple pattern. Simple pattern's been tested a lot. We tested this fly for about two seasons. We kept really detailed records. And I'll share some stuff with you as we go along about it. Okay, here's a uh, bleached white bucktail, okay? This fly is all bucktail except for the peacock curl on the back. So it's a very rugged pattern. Bucktail's real tough. It doesn't fall apart like feathers. So bleached white as opposed to flat white. 
it gives a real nice crisp white color to it. If you look at bait fish in the water, all the bait fish in the water have a nice white belly. It's not like a dirty white, it's a crisp white. So that's why we go with a white belly on the bottom of the bucktail. All right, so about the same amount as you'd use for the um, honey olive on the back, but not quite as much and more than the pink, okay? So now we're gonna tie that in. And again, you notice I'm using a lot of thread. I know some of you guys do two wraps, three wraps, and you got it locked in. And uh, that's very cool for those patterns, but for my pattern, man, remember we're going utilitarian here, okay? We want this thing to be able to go out and hammer some bluefish. We want to be able to get some bass. If a shark comes by and picks it up, we want this thing to hold up, okay? Okay, now, this next thing, we're gonna add a little bit of bright red on the bottom. We've tested this pattern with red and without red. If you don't put red on it, this fly is gonna lose about 30% of its effectiveness. A little red gill under the bottom, we found over the course of a day, over the course of a season, you're gonna get about 30 to 35% more hookups by having a little red gill on the bottom of the fly. It could suggest to a fish bleeding uh, of a bait fish, an injured bait fish, it could suggest gills flaring out, a feeding bait fish, whatever it were, whatever it is that triggers the striper, you gotta put a little red on the bottom, okay? So we're just gonna take this and add this little red beard in. Again, we're gonna try to figure it out, try to find a good color, a good thickness, and we're gonna cut a little bit off. All right, that's not enough, I want some more. Again, remember we're going heavily dressed here as opposed to sparse. And you can adjust the fly. You can make it sparse or light, whatever's working for you, or whatever's getting the hits for you. There's no right or wrong. Okay, we're gonna turn this around. Okay, we're gonna take this, cut it off like this. Now we're gonna invert it, just like this. And we're just trying to add a beard. We're not trying to add all the material in, just a beard to it. So we're gonna put it right on the bottom of the pattern. Here we go. Set it right in on the hook shank. Bring it right underneath the back of the hook. Tie in the red. You could either fold all this extra back like this and tie it in, all right, or you can cut it off. I already got plenty, so I'm gonna come down, gonna cut that real tight, I'm gonna put that little piece down for my next fly. Okay, now we gotta start wrapping. We're on the final wraps already on this pattern. So we're almost done. You get really good on this pattern, you can bang them out in a few minutes, provided you're getting all set up here. Uh, took us about half hour to set up today, maybe a little longer. Uh, but once you get everything ready to go, it's like production. You get your assembly line, everything set, and you just rock and roll and you get it done. All right, now we're putting a nice head. Another thing about putting a big head on this fly, it's gonna sink quicker. So if you wanna get it down like we do in uh, about five to eight feet of water pretty quick, go the heavy fly. All right, now I'm happy with that. Now we're gonna do our whip finish, just do a Bayman whip. Gonna go around quite a few times, because again, we're trying to make a very rugged pattern here. I do several wraps, all right? One comes undone. Uh, we're not gonna have to worry about this fly falling apart on us. All right, again, I know some of you guys out there, you do two, two whips and you're done and you make a beautiful fly, and I'm not knocking it, man. I got nothing but admiration for guys who can tie, uh, tie a good fly. So, here we go. Here's our pattern, we're gonna wrap it up here. We're just gonna pull it out, check it out like this. All right, that's looking pretty darn nice right there. And there's your Bayman Universal saltwater fly pattern that is tied for striped bass here on the Massachusetts coast. I'm Captain David Bitters. I vanned this fly about 15, 20 years ago. Tie some up, fish them, and let me tell you, man, you're gonna catch a lot of stripers on it. We use it about 70% of the time. Hey, one more thing I want to add to you, okay? We use um, 3D soft prism eyes on our fly. Sometimes we tie it with the eyes, sometimes without, okay? But if you do put eyes on, we use a 3 8 uh, silver with a black pupil. We put them right on the side and we lock them on with a household goop and we let it dry for 24 hours. Um, we found that works the best. And just to show you what it's gonna look like, if I did goop eyes on it, look at the difference, okay? When we put this eye on here. 
Let me get this on nice. So just so you can see it for reference, okay? This one isn't going to be gooped on, but check that out, okay? See the difference? See how that fly really comes alive? Uh, flies with eyes generally catch more fish than flies without eyes, okay? So if you add some eyes to your fly, that's a few more percentage points. If you add the red gill underneath the fly, that's a few more percentage points. And uh, if you tie a real rugged fly, it's going to hold up for you. So that's Captain Dave's Bayman Universal here on the Massachusetts coast. Tie some up, fish them wherever you're at, you're going to catch a lot of fish.